One of the best ways to get blazing fast performance out of React Native is to use the flatless component. Now unlike the scroll view component which we saw previously which completely renders a view and then wraps it in a scroll bar, the flat list uses virtualization. So the items only get rendered just as they are about to scroll into view. So let's take a look. To demonstrate the behavior with a large number of items, we create an array of 10,000 items which is just numbers humanized to strings. And we can definitely display all of these items within a simple scroll view. We map these items to text components and center align them and it takes a while to render but indeed it does eventually do so. But once it is loaded all of the items are fully rendered so if we scroll through the list notice that the scroll bar is a true representation of the full height of the scroll. Now the main issue with using scroll view for large lists is that it takes a long time to render and in certain scenarios for example if you bump up the number to 100,000 it doesn't even render. I mean it might but I'm not going to wait that long. Displaying large list of items efficiently is exactly the problem that the flat list component is designed to solve. So we get rid of the scroll view that is currently wrapping our text components and instead use the flat list component that is exported from React Native. And now once we save the file notice how quickly the view re-renders. What is happening in this case is that all of the items are not actually rendered. They will only get rendered once they are about to scroll into view. And you can sort of see that if we scroll past the end of the currently rendered items. Notice that when we are using the flat text component, we're not returning the index as a part of the key for the text components. This is because the flat list will wrap our components to make sure that it can position it properly. And for those wrappers, it has its own key extractor, which we can override. For example, if you want the key to be the item, which is just a string, which is a valid React key, we can do that with a custom key extractor function. The default key extractor would have checked item.key followed by item.id and then would have fallen back to using index. Now of course in order to be a full featured component, the flat list provides a number of props in order to optimize its lazy rendering. For example, we can change the number of items that are loaded initially using initial num to render and update the number of items that get fetched in every batch by using max to render per batch. The default values for these properties is 10 and with the max to render per batch bumped to 100, you can see that we are a lot less likely to scroll past the end of the currently rendered items because every time we are about to hit that, more items will get loaded each time. And of course, the best way to optimize any virtualized list component is to have a determined height for each of the individual items and this use case is supported by the flat list component as well. Let's go with a fixed height of 16 for each of the items within our list and we store that in a constant on top of our app. And instead of rendering naked text components, we will wrap them in a view which will give that fixed height. And here we are bumping up the font of the text component as well, but you might want to distribute this height differently depending upon the children that you have in each item. Now that we are rendering our items to each have a fixed height, we need to provide this information to the flat list component and we can do that by using the get item layout prop. This prop gets passed all of the data items that we have in the list, followed by the index that it currently wants to know the size calculation for. And we have to return an object containing three things. We have to return back the index that gets passed in, and this is a slight memory optimization so that the flat list doesn't have to create a different object. The length that this particular item is going to take, which we know to be the item height, followed by the offset away from the top, which in our case is going to be a simple multiplication of the index followed by the item height because all the items are the same height. And with this get item layout prop in place, we're going to get a much better experience when we scroll through the items. You can see that the scroll bar now is a true representation of the full expected height of the component. Now, just like other components within React Native, we can control an instance of the flat list by invoking methods on its reference. An example use case would be scroll to the end, which is common in a lot of messaging applications. And we can create a button that is intended to trigger the scroll to the end action. Now, of course, to trigger a method on the flat list, we would first need a reference to the flat list. And we can do that by using the useRef hook within React and then binding the result of this useRef to our flat list component. This will set ref.current to the current flat list instance once it gets rendered. With this ref in place, we jump to the on press in our scroll to the end button and invoke ref.current.scroll to end, which is a method provided by the flat list. Now, if we trigger this button, you can see that we indeed scroll to the hundred thousandth number. Another neat feature that is provided by the flat list 
is the ability to scroll to any particular index that we want. For example, we can scroll to halfway, which in our case is simply going to be items dot length divided by two. And if we trigger this particular button, you can see that we scroll to 50,000th and first item. Additionally, these methods do have a nice animation which will show up if the item that we are scrolling to is currently being rendered. For example, if we scroll within the rendering range of 50,000 and press scroll to halfway, we get this nice smooth animation. Smash that like and subscribe and check out the other videos on the channel for more developer tips and tricks and I will see you in the next one.